In this video, I'll be going through the Criterion D section of my design e-portfolio. So starting with the first strand, which is designing detailed and relevant testing methods, which generate data to measure the success of the solution. So for these testing methods, there are a few that you can choose from. The common ones are expert appraisal, field trial, performative testing, user observation, and user trial. It's recommended to have three testing methods. Two would prove to be insufficient to gather the data required to measure the solution success, and four may make it difficult to properly expand on each method given the page limit. And the first round is pretty much just explaining what the testing method is about and how you're gonna go about in using that method. So in this strand, what you'll have to do is you'll have to, for each testing method that you choose, you'll have to explain what the testing method is about. You'll have to justify the reason for the selection. You'll have to explain the respondents that you've selected for each of the testing method, as well as the feedback recording method that you'll be using. And something to note is that in total, it's preferable to have at least 10 respondents for all three testing methods. So a good distribution would maybe be two experts for user observation and for user trial. So if a good way to arrange all this data would be something like this table, where you include the number of the testing method, what the testing method is, justification of the choice, you explain the respondents and you justify your selection. And when you're mentioning who the respondents are, you can also mention the position that each person has, which is especially important for expert appraisal because their position would be part of the justification as to why they were chosen. And lastly, details of conducting. So for me, I chose the first testing method I chose was expert appraisal. And the second testing method that I chose is user observation. For user observation, it's preferable to pick respondents that are part of your target audience, which is part of the justification that you need to provide because there's a reason why it's called user observation. You can only observe relevant data if it's related to the target audience that you are targeting. And this target audience is something that you would have mentioned in Criterion A. So it has to relate back to that. It can't just be something that you created on the spot. And the last one that I chose is performative, performance testing, which if possible, you should also choose because it helps to test the functionality and performance of your solution, regardless of what it is. And what you do in the performance testing depends entirely on what your product and solution is. You'll have to see what is required uh, to ensure that, like what is the minimum requirement of functionality that your product has to achieve and how you can test that. That's something that you'll have to decide on your own. And another thing is that while it is not compulsory, a good way to gather data from all these testing methods is through a survey form. So if you were to use a survey form, you'll have to explain the survey forms for each testing method separately. You'll have to mention what questions are you including and the purpose of the question. If possible, you'll also have to include a picture of the survey form. The reason I didn't is because it didn't fit within my page count, but if possible, you should do it. But if really it's if you really can't have if I can't find the space, you can place it in the appendix. And when you create the survey form, the questions have to be created in a way that allows you to evaluate the success of your solution against the design specifications that you created in the first round of Criterion B. So you mentioned certain criteria that you want your solution to have. And these questions have to be made in a way so that the respondents or whoever is answering the questions can allow you to gather data on whether these specifications were met by your solution or not. And for me, I use the Access FM model to create the questions because it allows me to know what aspects of my solution my questions should focus on. So this is for expert appraisal and for user observation as well. I didn't include it for perform, uh, performance testing because a survey form does not apply for that testing method. So it's not like it's necessary for everything, but it depends on what testing method you're using. You should always have a survey form if possible.
So the second strand is to critically evaluate the success of the solution against the design specification. So here you'll have to sort of summarize and explain the results you got from the testing methods. So you'll have to, because I use surveys, so what I did is for each of the survey questions, I summarized the data in a graphical format, so a pie chart, bar graph, whatever applied to the question. And that would be sort of the summary. And I would place, I would arrange the questions on the left and explain the outcome based on the graph on the right. So if possible, you should always include the graph here, but similar to the case before, I did not have space for this. So I included all of my graphs in the appendix, but really if possible, you should include all the graphs here. So you put all your questions here and you explain the outcome, you summarize the outcome and the main points that you got from it. And towards the end, you give a conclusion for the data that you've obtained from the testing method. And this is repeated for all the other testing methods too. And for performance testing, especially, it's important to have photos and pictures because for you need some sort of proof of your testing. So for pre, uh, the user observation and expert appraisal, that proof was the survey forms, the results from that, and the graphs that I gave as a summary for all the results I got. But for, but for performance testing, there's no such thing. So for whatever you did for your solution, you should include some sort of pictures or videos that show that you've tested something. And because you can't include videos in the report, if you do have any videos, uh, the design ePortfolio allows you to send one video file to the IB along with your report. So you can include this video over there if you have anything that you'd like to showcase. So after summarizing the results you got from all three testing methods, you'll have to conduct some sort of analysis in order to, in order to determine what the strengths and weaknesses of your solution is in regard to the design specifications from criterion B, um, the first strand and criterion B once again. So for me, I always use the SWOT analysis because I can analyze strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So I think it's a good model to use. And I also organize my points, again, in terms of the access FM to ensure that I'm evalu evaluating the success of my solution against the design specifications. So another thing to really keep in mind is that you're not simply saying that this part is good or bad, but it has to be, you have to really compare it to what you said you wanted your solution to be like. And of course, all of these must be based on the responses, the results you have gotten. So it can't just simply be something that you personally think. It has to be a result from one of the testing methods that's been shown through their results. And you give a conclusion at the end. And the third strand is to explain how the solution could be improved. So improvements has to be suggested purely based on the results of the testing methods to ensure that this is accounted for. So if you, you have to ensure that it's accounted for when creating survey forms and such. You should always ask a question on what, improve, what improvements you think my product could have. Or you have to somehow ask a question to detect any weaknesses in your product so you could infer an improvement based off of that. And if possible, it's good to have at least three improvements. If there's really less than three, there's nothing that you got from your testing methods, you'll have to provide an explanation as to why there was no need for more improvements. And because and through this, you have to refer back to your testing, uh, testing results. And of course, these improvements must also be evident in the SWOT analysis or whatever analysis you did from before because there you organize the weaknesses and threats of your solution. So they have to be correlated to the improvements that you're suggesting. So you have to propose an improvement, explain the reasoning behind the improvement and how it was achieved. And you have to use annotated sketches or photographs to show the before and after improvement. So you can organize it sort of in this sort of table. 
then the final strand is to explain the impact of the solution on the client target audience. So once again, this client target audience is the one that you put in criterion A. So for this strand, there are a total of four questions that you'll have to answer. The first is, to what extent has the client's or target audience's problem has been resolved? So this problem is the one that you've mentioned in Criterion A strand one. So you'll have to determine whether you got the answer to the problem statement or whether you tackled the audience's issue that you had raised in that criterion. The second question is, how does this improve? How does the solution improve the client's or target audience's solution? The third question is, to what extent has the design brief been met? So here you have to refer back to criterion A strand four and cross-check whether you follow the design brief or not. Of course, it's not necessary to have to have completely followed it, but you'll have to explain whether you did or not and to what extent the design brief was followed. If it was not followed to a great extent, you'll have to explain why such changes were made to your solution. And when you ex explain these changes, you can refer back to the testing methods and the improvements that you suggested. And the last one is, are there any negative impacts the solution can ha could have? Once again, you could refer back to the results from the testing methods that you got in order to answer this question. And finally, you include the references that you have for when doing the research in general. The references are mainly for Criterion A, but you could have also used references here and there to support certain points that you made. And you should also note that these references are also within the 40 um, page count. Yeah, and that's it for the video. Thank you for watching.